So before the render pipeline, creating glass was quite a task. There was no real way of creating realistic looking glass, which didn't require extensive research and programming. And I would always run to the asset store. Now with the new features within the material settings, I can create glass that not only looks great, but refracts to my own preferences. Let me show you. So here we have a sphere, and I put this in the scene because this best demonstrates the capabilities of this material. So speaking of which, I'm gonna create this material by going to create and then material, and I'm gonna name it something relevant. And then I'm gonna apply it to the sphere. So now we have access to the brand new material inspector tab. And if I were to zoom in, in our surface options, we have a thing called surface type. And as I mentioned earlier, we have two options, opaque and transparent. Opaque simulates a completely solid material with no light penetration. In contrast, transparent is an alpha blend and it simulates a translucent surface. And then I'm gonna go down to my material types. So this is what I would consider one of the best new features within the material inspector, as these options create new behaviors that allow me to create even more realistic looking materials, each option providing additional parameters within the inspector once activated. So for any of you that don't know, subsurface scattering works by simulating how light interacts and penetrates translucent objects like plants. And it's also used in different verticals of ways of simulating skin. Have you ever shined a light through the tip of your finger? This light appears to change color as it interacts with the different layers of tissue. And subsurface scattering is amazing for that because it's really good at simulating skin. So light gets absorbed by the material, scatters, and then exits out a different location. And this is how it simulates that layered look. This option allows us to create anisotropic materials. Um, think of brushed aluminium. So instead of creating really nice clean reflections, it's gonna jumble up those reflections and defer them and create reflections that are reflecting in all kinds of different angles. We have iridescence. It creates kind of a rainbow sheen around the border of the material and gives it quite a nice look. So I'm gonna go with iridescence. So now we have our input, and this will be really familiar as it was in the previous iteration of the material editor. So I wanna make my glass quite dirty. So I'm gonna go for a light-ish green, and you can see that my material starts to change color. One of the most important things to remember is the alpha. So the alpha is determined from a value of zero to 255, 255 being completely opaque and zero being transparent. And as I start to decrease the value, you can see on the left, my material starts to become transparent. So I've set mine to around about 30. An important thing to remember, now that I've set the alpha to 30, even with my surface type set to transparent, if I were to set it back to opaque, it still is opaque because this determines the surface. So now for the really cool bit, our transparency inputs. So the transparency inputs is where we can start to determine parameters that will affect the overall transparent effect. The transparency inputs will only become available once the surface type is set to transparent. So here we have our refraction model, and we have two options, plane and sphere. For filled objects, you would use the sphere model with a refraction thickness approximating the size of the object the material is placed on. In other words, the thickness would be determined based on how big the object is you're applying the material to. And then you have plane, and plane's really good for empty objects. And with this, you would use plane mode with a small refraction thickness. So for this demo, I'm gonna select sphere. So here we have our SS ray model. We have two options again, proxy and what I would call high Z. And what proxy does is it approximates the scene by a simple shape, performs a ray cast against that shape, and then computes the deviated light. And now we can start to mess with our index of refraction. So the index of refraction ranges on a scale of one to 2.5. And adjusting the parameter will provide a different refraction intensity. So by default, the value is set to one, and this generates no refraction. As I start to increase the slider from one to 2.5, I can start to see that it starts to refract the environment. And as I look around, the entire environment is refracted, and we can also see the iridescence on the top of the orb. If I were to turn off iridescence, that rainbow sheen would disappear. So let's change that back to iridescence. So our refraction thickness, mine is currently set to one, and that's what I'm gonna leave it at. But you do have your refraction thickness maps and your refraction thickness multiplier. So that in essence is a way of creating realistic looking glass material that refracts to my own preferences. 
And one of the really cool things I like to do, which is just part of my general workflow, is apply a normal map to the surface of my glass. And the way I apply a normal map is I go to the normal map, I click, and I'm gonna search for scratches. And once that's applied, I can see that the surface of my material has now started to use the normal map and create a rough surface. And I can increase or decrease the slider to increase the intensity. So I'm gonna set mine at about 0.2. And you can still add more detail using the new options provided in the material inspector. So now, let's apply this to our glass behind. I'm gonna assign the material to the glass, and there we go. But there's something not quite right about it. I'm not seeing this top rim. And this is because I haven't set the material to double-sided. So Unity is only generating the face of the material that is facing me. So the way I fix this is I go into my material and I select double-sided. And now that that's ticked, I can now see the outer rim of the glass. So this is how powerful this particular feature is. So if any of you are interested in reading more about the high definition render pipeline, then please check out Sebastian's blog on visual quality. It explains everything I've pretty much mentioned, and but it also goes into detail about lighting and how important lighting is within a scene. I've also linked to the GDC talk, um, which announces the Book of the Dead and shows how the Book of the Dead is used to its max potential. So we learn what a pipeline is, how to implement and upgrade assets, and then finally how to take the new features put them to good use, create a realistic looking glass material that can be used throughout any project. So thank you so much for listening and please do follow me on Twitter. Here's my Twitter handle. And download the HD Render Pipeline for yourself. Have a play around. The reason why I put this handle here is because I want you to let me know how it goes. I want to hear about your experiences. Thank you so much for listening.